We warned you about NEO on August 4th. Since then, the stock has fallen 50%. Typically, we are really excited when stocks fall 20, 30, maybe even 50%. That way, we're able to start a position or add to a position that we already have. But our concern was not about the short term. It was about the longevity of NEO going forward. Let's get into what that warning was and what we see going forward with NEO. I'm Mo. Let's get into it right now. So the first thing I look at here is their deliveries. They did actually a really great job. NEO delivered 16,074 vehicles in October of 2023, increasing 59.8% year over year. Fantastic. NEO delivered 126,000 cars year to date in 2023, increasing 36.3% year over year. Fantastic. The problem is falling into the story, and that's the warning that I have for you right now. Don't get sucked into this story. Do they make a good product? Sure, of of course they make a good product. That's a great car. But look at this. Chinese car makers produced 27.02 million units in 2022. Guys, look what we just saw here. 126,000 and change vehicles. I'm not saying that they don't make a good car. That's not what we're saying as a channel. What we're saying is, Don't get sucked into the overall story saying they make a good car, they're EVs, they're disruptive, they're going to take over the market there. It's going to take some time. There's a lot of unpredictable things out there. Let's go a little bit further. This is an additional article that came out today, and I have one more to show you. NEO stock price prediction as it plans to cut 10% of its staff. So this company that's supposed to be getting better and better and better over time is going to be cutting 10% of their staff because they're probably running into... um, cash flow problems. Now, nothing is stopping NEO stock from crashing. And as I said previously in the video, this thing is down 50% since August 4th. NEO shares have been hammered in recent months because the Chinese EV maker is falling short of expectations. Although the company reported solid growth for October, this growth is not as, as, as impressive when you compare it to its peers. Tesla, Xpeng, the list goes on. Disappointment with NEO's results is likely to continue which in turn could keep the stock moving in a downward trajectory. I'm going to pull up my chart here just so you can see how dramatic this fall is. This was August 4th where you had this big peak and the fall has just gone down, down, down. And if you, let's go back all the way here. I mean, this thing is lower than COVID pricing at this point. We are in a serious fall right now. And honestly, there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. And when I start seeing analysts that are coming out and starting to write articles like this one. Neo stock cannot stop from crashing. That is something that worries me because this is the one where there's supposed to be this grandiose story around it. We're supposed to be able to get retail investors. We're supposed to be able to get people like Stock Mo that make a thousand videos on this thing to keep pumping this thing higher and higher. And that's kind of the story that we're seeing turn in the opposite direction now. So before we go and start looking into some real numbers of the company, I want to pull up some comments from our previous video that we did in August. And this is, Neo is in beast mode. This company has amazing growth over the next 10 years. That's very possible. It absolutely is very possible. But why in the short term are they already suffering? This should be the time that they are growing and growing and growing. And Over the next 10 years, yeah, growth will slow, but it shouldn't be slowing now. In the beginning of the 10-year period, this should be going at another level. If you keep watching these guys, you're going to miss one hell of a bull run. The guy comments on it, and he says, that's what I say. Well, the one hell of a bull run, What is? are the bulls resting right now? Are they getting ready to take off? What's the problem here? So we just talked about the story, and before we get into the numbers of it, friend of the show, Aswath Demoter, and who I was just on a call with this morning, he says, stories without numbers are just fairy tales. And numbers without stories are Excel sheets. And that's absolutely true. And what these people in these comments are saying, it's a story. This thing is going to be amazing for the next 10 years. Well, let's go and look at the numbers and the concerns that I have going forward or the assumption, the crazy assumptions that I need to make in order to make this come true. So let's go here to Neo. It's down another three and a half percent today. $13 billion company. Let's see. They So their cash flows are negative. They don't make any money. Obviously, they don't have a PE. They don't have profit margins. Gross profit margin, small. I, I mean, here's the problem. Look at all of these things. There's nothing for me to base this off of. All of this is based on what? A story. At this point, it is just a story. It's I can make assumptions, absolutely, and I'm going to. I'm going to show you how. But it's a very, very difficult thing to do. You can make you can analyze companies and you can 
put a valuation on companies that don't have free cash flow. It's a cash burn right now. It makes perfect sense. I'm not saying that they should be profitable right now. This is a cash burn company. It's in a very early phase, and that is okay. There is a way to value these companies. I don't believe that the majority of people out there can, though. So a good investment is all about the price that you pay. Let's look at the stock price right now. This is $7.95. Let's call it $8 for whole numbers, okay? If this thing was $80 a share, would your story still be the same? Would you say, yes, this is going to the moon? Let's say that it was $800 a share. Would you say, yes, I need to buy this. It's going to go to the moon. It's going to keep going higher and higher. For me, I wouldn't. Because I'm looking at this and you're, there's probably a lot of people out there saying, this is why you don't do this, this and that. Well, just to let you know, I have a hundred bagger already and a 10 bagger. So suck it. What makes a great investment is the price that you pay. If nothing else changes as the price is fluctuating all over the place, I don't know what you have. So looking down here, it is very difficult for me to put some type of confident value on this. Now let's go and look at their income statement. Is revenue continuously growing? Yes, it is. It is, and that's great, but eventually profit has to catch up. Let's see what the profit is doing. My assumption is they're losing more money, and they are. They're losing more money each quarter. Again, not a bad thing. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cash burn situation right now. They are diluting the heck out of you. This thing has gone from 1.03 to 1.64 billion over the last four years of shares outstanding, so there alone they're hurting you. They're also hurting you by falling 50% in the last couple of months. There is not a lot of confidence that I as an investor have in this company right now. But let's pull up Stock Analyzer. To, you know, before we do that, let's see what the analysts have to say. Because these are going to be the people that are going to cheerlead this the most. Losing $1.40 this year and making $0.78 cents in the end of 2027, it is incredible growth on the earnings side. Now on the revenue side, going from $8.76 to $24 billion. Now, how many cars are they selling at that point? That's the real question. Because they need to be selling a lot more than 126 or a million cars to be a real competitor in that Chinese market. We saw that there's about 23 million cars sold there each year. So for them to make some substantial stamp there, they need to really pick up the pace. And I think that it's going to involve a lot more revenue than that. Here are my numbers from my August video. 15, 30, and 45% for revenue growth. Okay, these are total assumptions because they're not profitable right now. So anything I'm putting in profit margin doesn't really work because I am assuming that there's profit starting today with Stock Analyzer tool, and we don't have that. Three and a half, five and a half, and seven and a half percent profit margin. Those are very high profit margins, especially at the seven and a half side for the car industry. But I'll give it to them. Let's see, three and a half, five and a half, seven and a half for free cash flow margin. PE. I'm going to change this. I'm actually going to put in here twenty, twenty five. And 30%, 20, 25, and 30%. And my margin of safety or desired annual return is going to be 20%. Now, I'm going to click analyze. This doesn't mean buy it today. This doesn't mean I'm right. This doesn't mean I'm wrong. It just, I'm just putting in assumptions. And this is assuming profit today, day one. Now, current price, eight bucks, $2.88 on the low, 68 on the high, 15.40 in the middle. But remember, I'm assuming all of these things, 45% revenue growth, 7.5% profit margin starting today with a 30 PE. I mean, guys, this is a very, very, very tough company to analyze. Not impossible, but tough. Don't just go with the story for this one. If you're curious about the software I'm using and you want to talk to other community members about this, these type of topics, click this link right here, seven-day free trial. Use all the tools. Have a great day.